Kaiser Slauten, four time German champions, a former Champions League quarter finalist, and once a giant of German football. Nowadays, a constant lingerer of the lower divisions, and this year is no different. The Red Devils are in the thick of the second division's relegation battle and look quite likely to drop back down to the third division. It's time to return to the glory days of Kaiser Slauten. We are taking control and making them once again one of Germany and Europe's biggest clubs. A massive rebuild on the horizon today, ladies and gentlemen. This is the starting lineup that we have inherited at Kaiserslautern. Definitely need to put our own touch on things here and get this side firing and back into the Bundesliga. But for certain, this season, our objective is not promotion. Our objective is survival. Because at the moment, Kaiserslautern are a yo-yo club, not between the Bundesliga and the second division, but between the second and third division. It just feels wrong having Kaiser Slauten playing in their 50,000 seat stadium in the third division. Kicking off our managerial reign in fashion, we are going to sign the German attacking midfield wonder kid, Umut Tuhomsu. He's joining us from Hoffenheim for an absolute bargain of 2.45 million pounds. He wants more game time and that's exactly what we're going to give him. Our managerial reign might begin with a signing, but it's not too long in. We've got ourselves a departure. It is going to be Kevin. Evan Kraus heading to Hull City for a million pounds. I mean, unless you're a superstar player, if I join a club and you're like around the 30 year old mark, I'm gonna sell you. I'm gonna sell you and try cashing in. Another player that that happens to, Ben Zielinski off to Coventry. And on the same token, if you're a young guy and you're pretty trash, I'm gonna loan you out. Another older player, the attacking midfielder, Philip Clement off to Southampton, 1.1 million pounds. When we sign that other guy, there is no surprise that I'm gonna try selling this guy. This right here, though is a signing I am really excited by. We're going to sign a Japanese youngster, Koki Saito, on a one-year deal. I'm interested to see how he goes. We bring him across from Sparta Rotterdam for £3.6 million. His value jumps up as soon as we sign him, which is a great omen. So with the formation that we're rocking, we're no longer playing defensive midfielders, but Julian Nihus, 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 I'm going to say, could be an absolute stud. I'm going to convert him to a centre-back here, and he goes up to a 70 immediately from that. All right, I need to watch this guy. He might not get the starting 11 spot right now, although he probably could now, to be fair. Like, I mean, I have Boris Tomiak playing as one of the starting center backs, but two years younger, the same overall. Yeah, I'm going to give him the spot. I feel like we've been doing so much business already with Hull City. They might have to become our new best friends here, but Gene Zimmer is heading to Hull City, and we're also going to say goodbye to Richmond Tarchi here, cashing in on the young striker for 1.45 million pounds. It has been an active transfer for window so far, but it's going to end here. Our final signing for this summer window is to sign the Austrian defender, Artis Jasic here. Like I said though, fellas, we've had an active start to the window, and I'm happy with the business we've done, but the only goal this year, survive relegation. Do not go down with Kaiserslautern. Although, to be fair, things have gotten off to a pretty good start. So again, I love my omens, and I'm hoping this is a big omen. Good omens are proving true, lads. We are sitting 7th here on the 1st of January at the halfway point of this Bundesliga 2 season. Seven. We're four points away from potentially getting into the playoffs. There are no like playoffs when you think of the English Championship. This playoff would be third place in the Bundesliga 2 versus I believe third last in the Bundesliga top flight. Obviously it'd be a lot easier if we could go automatically but right now I mean this is exceeding all of my expectations. I mean what's the relegation zone? We're, so we're still not safe. We're only 15 points clear of Braunschweig who were in the relegation playoff game for the Bundesliga 2 slash 3, but we're in a really good spot to make sure that we can at least stay up. Bit of an issue though, lads. Julian Nihuis Niehaus, I'm just going to call him Niehaus, once out of the club, he submitted a transfer request. Tomiak has been still able to push himself into the starting 11. So honestly, I want to keep the future with Julian. So I'm going to throw Boris Tomiak on the transfer list and see if we can somehow wrestle a little bit of hope back here. But he's not the only man we're looking at selling. The older left back, Hendrik Zuck off to Swansea. Daniel Hunslick off to Rail Zaragoza. And the path is clear for Julian to be the starting center 
centre back Boris Tomiak off to Rapid VN for 2.35 million pounds. And lads, we're going to use that money to cash in on somebody huge here, a massive addition on our potential push for promotion. Dian Ramaz, the German shot stopper, is our goalkeeper of the future. We spend 4.3 million pounds to bring the German back to German football. And because of that, we are going to loan out our former number one goalkeeper here, Julian Kral. Still some growth left in him, so I want to see if he can harness that at Luton Town for the next two years. Oh my god. Oh my god. We have won the league with Kaiser Slauten in our first season in charge. Oh my god. Look at that. Look at the points. There are three points between the top five clubs. Holy sh**. It's so funny because in real life, like you look at the two clubs that got promoted, us and Schalke. In real life, both clubs going like a bus both clubs in danger. I mean, Schalke are in danger of folding as a club. We're in danger of getting relegated, but we've both been promoted. That is a legacy promotion if I've ever seen one. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm over the moon. Over the moon about getting promoted, but I'm also terrified that we're gonna get relegated next year. I don't know if the squad is ready for the Bundesliga. That is mental though. I was expecting us to be down where the likes of Hansa Rostock are, but instead we've won the league. Stuttgart are going to win DFB Pokal. Unfortunately, we lost to Stuttgart in the second round. Bochum are going to stay up in the Bundesliga though. And Dinamo Dresden are coming up to the second division. What a first year though for our Japanese left midfielder Koki Saito. I am definitely renewing this dude's contract. If we're any chance of pulling off the impossible, the great escape and surviving in the Bundesliga next year, we're going to need this dude. Decent season as well for our striker Arce. Ragnar Arce who gets 14 goals. Again, we're going to need some big plays if we're going to survive. Losing two players here, though, as Puchas and Soldo are going back to their parent clubs. This is not where I expected us to be right now, but I mean, I am nervous at the daunting prospect we have ahead next season, but I am not complaining. The goal of the rebuilds is to win the Champions League title as fast as possible, and this is putting us in great stead. Bring on the Bundesliga with Kaiserslautern. So we're coming in here season two. We're being given 26 million pounds to work with. Again, we're going to have to make this money work for us and be really smart with our signings. Certain players having loans expire means our squad depth isn't good at all. So we won't, we can't really sell players either. Now, if this was, if we didn't get promoted this year, I'd be going in for like a young center midfielder. I'd be like very happy in the fact that we could probably take our time building out the youth of this squad. Instead, now we need to have a balancing act. I want to get as many players up and around the mid 70s marker as possible so that we can try surviving in this Bundesliga season. Trying to channel my inner Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill here as we money ball this season. Trying to sign players that are extremely undervalued and can make a big impact to us for this season. The Swiss midfielder Cameron Fuertas had less than 12 months remaining on his contract so we pick him up for 6.8 million pounds. And Hertha Berlin were not promoted to the Bundesliga next year meaning they have players that want out and want to make that next step. So on the very same day, we signed the Polish left back, Mikhail Karboniak here for 7.1 mil. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Jan Elvedi is probably a brother or a cousin of Nico Elvedi, but he wanted out of the club. We're going to cash in on him and sell him to Copenhagen for 1.3 mil. The budget build out continues here, lads. Another German player into the squad. It is the right midfielder, Aaron Dinsi, joining us from Werder Bremen, a 1.5 million pound discount. Again, 75 rated. He's got age on his side. This could be a pretty good signing in general, even if we weren't trying to survive the relegation battle. Another player departure here, though. Another player we've sold to Coventry, Philip Hercher, off there for 1.2 mil. And just like we did with Julian last year, we're going to convert another defensive midfielder into a centre back. Afiz Arimu is now a 71 rated centre back. Again, it's good to see that overall the squad slowly improving any way we can make it happen. The big question, though, this season is have we done enough. Are we going to survive this relegation battle? It's going to come down to the wire. That's my prediction. We need our big players to really lift for us. But we'll get a clearer indication of how this insane season is going once we get to the 1st of January. All right. Yeah, we're in the relegation battle, but we're not in it deep. We are not in it at Augsburg levels. At least we've won some games. We're sitting 12. There is a lot of teams below us, but we are only six points clear. Two losses and we could be down in the red. And I mean, there's not much room for us to 
to grow. We could have a good run of form and somehow end up in European football, but I shouldn't even be thinking like that. We just need to make sure we are fending off everybody that's coming for us. Fending off the Schalkers, the Bockhams, the Mines. I'm not worried about Augsburg, but I'm worried about slipping down. I wasn't necessarily interested in making any transfers this window, but PSV came with up to us with an offer that I couldn't refuse. Our 30 year old center midfielder, Marlon Ritter, 73 overall. They pay 3.5 mil for him. Let's go out there and get ourselves a solid upgrade in the midfield and continue our moves in the right direction. He's no wonder kid, but I still think this is a terrific pickup. Edward Lowen is currently playing in the MLS at St. Louis City FC. He's 27 years of age, 76 overall. We are bringing him back to Germany. He wants to leave St. Louis, doesn't want to live in the hammer murder capital of the world. So we're going to sign him here to Kaiserslautern. That is huge. We survive. We're staying up in the Bundesliga with Kaiser Slout, and that is, I'm very happy about that, lads. We end up finishing 10 points clear of the relegation zone, but I want to give a massive shout out. Look at 15th place. Augsburg survived. Augsburg, who were basically dead and buried at the halfway point of the season, end up getting clear of the relegation playoff game by one point. That is incredible. Got to give them their standing over where they deserve it. But as we scroll up the table, the top dogs in the Bundesliga this year are Bayern Munich, who have completed an invincible season. We may see it in real life this year with Leverkusen, but Bayern Munich have done it in game. Zero losses here in season two. Leverkusen do win DFB Pokal though. Cologne have survived. They win the relegation playoff game. The Champions League is an all English affair with Man City coming out on top. Chelsea win the Europa League and it's a full English domination here. The Conference League goes to West Ham. Nobody really going crazy, but I've got to give massive props here to Ragnar Arce. Ragnar Arce has bagged himself 16 goals which is exactly what we needed in a season where survival was our goal. We didn't expect any players to win the golden boot, but I mean, Puertas, big signing in the summer. He had a great year, nine and eight. Saito, another great year, up to a 79 now. Even our other new signing, Dinky, up to a 79, seven and two. So the lads really pulling their weight. And all things considered, that's a pretty good second half of the season there for Lowen. I've got zero complaints about this year, lads. That'll all go down the drain if we don't back it up again in season three. Season Season three is going to begin with an upgrade to the defense. 25 year old Jakob Kilior, the former, well, former in this sense, Arsenal defender, is the second Polish defender joining us out here. He signs on for 13 million pounds. And I've just noticed that his value as well has gone up. They're the world, the FIFA gods, the EAFC gods are starting to notice Mr. Rebuild's effect. Sign somebody, the value skyrockets. Starting to get rid of a few of the older players though. Kulak, he's not older, but he has wanted out of the club for a hot minute it now. So we're going to send him off to the Portuguese league. And we're also going to say goodbye to Kenny Prince Redondo, who's heading to Turkey. We desperately need to start building out our reserves though. We're going to make four free agent signings. We're going to sign a defender in Ethan Anderson, a German center back in Mats Becker, a Croatian left midfielder here in Murich, and a Belgian attacking midfielder in De Smith. Starting to build out the squad depth because next year I want to go on a big cleaning out spree and really get this squad fired. I would love for us to transition out of the mindset of survival and to transition into the mindset of growing up this table. But unfortunately, I think we're still at a spot with this squad where we have to be in a survival mindset. We are going to loan out the Belgian attacking midfielder though, the Indus Smet. I think he could be a bit of a stud. I don't necessarily want to have the what if in the back of my mind. So let's send him out to Osasuna for the year. But lads, if you are enjoying today's video and you aren't already subscribed, make sure you go ahead and score and kick that subscribe button down below. And if you already have, make sure you leave a like on the video. Cheers, lads. 12th place in the Bundesliga again. Literally, we every time we've checked the Bundesliga table, we've been in 12th position, which again, when I'm on survival mode, isn't a bad thing. But man, I just want some progress. And again, we're not home and safe. I mean, again, the, the bottom two teams are having even worse stinkers than last year. St. Paul in Cologne, not even into double digits. Augsburg in the hunt again. I'm feeling more confident this year about surviving relegation, but I'm not feeling, I mean, we're only four points out of seventh place. I don't know.
know what to expect out of this year. I don't have the answers anymore. And unfortunately, we don't really have much money either. So just the one signing as we continue trying to improve our squad depth. It is Brooklyn Eze joining us for 2.35 million pounds from Hanover. So it's good news. The good news, we have moved away from 12th for the first time in our Bundesliga reign. But unfortunately, it's because we moved down to 13th. We've survived relegation again though this year. We end up finishing a point better than we did last year in terms of our gap between us and the relegation. We are 11 points clear of Cologne, but we need to start getting ourselves, like I said, out of the survival mindset and trying to make a push from mid-table to European football. Leverkusen have won the Bundesliga this year. No invincible season for Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich do in DFB Pokal. I would love if we could start having a bit of a run in that. I mean, we again, we haven't made it past the second round. Cologne just continue to dodge relegation. Real Madrid have forced Liverpool into back-to-back -back Champions League final losses. Stade Rene win the Europa League and the Conference League goes to PSV. Another top goal scoring season here for Ragnar Arce. Maybe we start making a move at getting an upgraded striker next year because he's been consistent. But if we want to get up to the European spots, we might just need somebody great. Koki Saito up to an 83 now. So he's starting to become a bit of a superstar. Need him to just get some support though. This is the year we need to take the next step, lads. Season four, our first signing is a big pickup in the midfield. 81 rated Azadine Unai, the Moroccan center midfielder joining us from Marseille. Because we were ahead of schedule earlier in this rebuild, but now we're four seasons in. We're exactly where I thought we would be four seasons in. It's time to take that next step. And I know we're trying to sign big players at the moment, but we're going to get a regen free agent in here though, trying to build out the depth of the squad, just like we said we would. We're going to beat out Almir City and sign the German midfielder, Ralf Schmidt. And now it is time to say goodbye Julian Niehaus, Niehaus, I, again, I don't know how to pronunciate his name and we're not going to have to anymore because we have sold him to Celtic. We're also selling another former starting 11 player. He helped us in our relegation fight, but it is now time to cash in on Lowen. Another big addition to the side though, we're improving the defense once again. Gaston Alvarez, the Uruguayan center half. I think this is the first time I've ever signed him in a video, but we're going to bring him across here from Getafe. 20 mil, please be a rock at the back for us. The clean out is going to continue here at the club though. I told you guys to expect it. Our former captain Toure, 30 years of age now off to PSV. Our former third string goalkeeper Avdo Spahic off to Turkey. The defensive midfielder who we sent on loan literally is what our first or second move. Aaron Baznek out of the club permanently now. And we're also saying goodbye to Lex Tiger Lobinger. That's a sick name. Sounds like he could be the villain in like an action movie or something. If they ever reboot Die Hard, they'll have to model the villain on this guy, but we're selling his ass. A big season is necessary here though this season, lads. We've saved a little bit of money because I am prepared to make some signings in summer. This is a really big first half of the season here for Ramaj. He's 24 years of age right now. He isn't growing nearly anywhere as fast as we wanted. Honestly, unless he has a belter first half of the season, I'm probably going to look to upgrade the goalkeeper. And I'm also going to give another year here to Arce. He's 28, 79 overall. He's definitely going to be going out next year, but I want to see if we can get him up to 80, 81 and get some more value for him. This is the position we want to be in. This is where we want to be. We are in the hunt for European football, currently sitting seventh right now. I don't expect us to be playing Champions League football next year, but if we could sneak into the Europa League, the Conference League, get ourselves a bit of experience on the European stage, but most importantly, give ourselves a financial boost. That would be exactly what we need at this point. We've got a nice little cushion here though. Six points ahead of Union Berlin, Freiburg, Schalke. So we need to use that to our advantage and really push up here into these European spots. So yeah, Ramaj is not growing. He hasn't grown a single overall in this second, this first half of the season. So we're throwing him on the transfer list and we get him out of here quick smart. I would say it's a massive understatement to say that I'm really disappointed with how things have gone. Of course, of course he goes up one overall the second I sell him. Of course. Screw you, mate. I hope you don't kiss. keep a single clean sheet. I'm annoyed, but now let's go get ourselves an upgraded goalkeeper. We've replaced our German joke with an Italian stallion. It is Stefano Tirati joining us at Kaiserslautern from Sassuolo. 80 rated. His value goes, we cannot get a win with our goalkeepers. His value has tanked, which is not what we want, but I'm still hopeful this guy can be a gem for us. It's not Champions 
league, but I'm still cool with this. Sixth place in the Bundesliga means we are going to be playing European football next year. Like I said, at halfway through the season. Good experience but it's gonna be really good for our back pocket. Reinvest that money into some top tier players, I hope, and continue this exponential growth with Kaiserslautern ahead of season five. Bayern Munich win the league again. It's been a two horse race, it feels like, between Leverkusen and Bayern this whole video. And as we scroll down, Schalke and Hertha, Hertha Berlin. Is that the worst season in Bundesliga history? Leverkusen win another DFB Pokal title. And again, uh, we are just, we are round two merchants when it comes to the POC DFB Pokal, but I feel like we always lose to the teams that win. Heidenheim have won the playoff game here, so they're gonna be in the Bundesliga next year. AC Milan have won the Champions League. PSG win the Europa League, and it is Villarreal winning the Conference League. I'm so curious to see how we go in Europe next year. Yeah, we're gonna have, to, I mean, that growth is really good for Ragnar, but we're gonna need a new striker. 12 goals is not what we need from him. We need somebody that's gonna be getting 20, 30, maybe even 40 goals a season. Good year here for Aaron Dinky. No growth, which is frustrating. But yeah, we just, like, we don't have any superstars at the moment that are getting superstar numbers. I'm so surprised that Koki Saito is getting this crazy growth. Dynamic play potential is working brilliantly here for him. I mean, he is a high potential player to begin with, but five goals, five assists isn't necessarily setting the world on fire. 87 overall, though, is brilliant. We are going to be saying goodbye to two players here. Robin Himmelman, 80 or 38 year old goalkeeper down to 47 overall. We're letting him walk on a free. Frank Ronstadt, I wanted to sell him, but he only wanted to go on a loan move. So he's signed a pre-contract elsewhere. Finally getting some sort of European football next year though. Let's see if we can step up and really take this rebuild to the next level. This is exactly why I wanted European football. We have broken our club record transfer, not by one or two mil. We've almost tripled it. Marcos Leonardo, the Brazilian striker. We said we wanted a guy who's going to come out and be the superstar, the answer for us ahead of this European season. And I'm hoping this guy's going to be at 85 overall, 24 years of age, 66.5 million pounds to bring him across from Star Rene. I'm really excited. We've gone from the high of signing Marcus Leonardo. We're going to sign another regen, another backup player. Pedro Mendes looks pretty decent here, the young Portuguese right back, signing him on a free transfer. And we're official in cashing in on Ragnar, lads. Ragnar Archie is heading to France, heading to Monaco, 33.3 million pounds for the German. And we're also going to cash in on Cameron Puertas. I wanted to keep him as a backup and for squad depth, but we need the money if we're going to get a big upgrade to the center midfield role. He's going to stay in German football heading to Wolfsburg. I am absolutely pumped about this one, fellas. We get a new center midfielder. We had to work our asses off to make this happen. It was an intense negotiation process, but Javi Guerra is joining us from Juventus for 56.8 million pounds. We've got 79,000 pounds left in our budget. That's how much we had to spend to get him. We've taken a huge step here. This team, like we went from being, I was nervous about us qualifying for European football to now I'm like, we could win the whole damn Europa League. The goals this year, we need to go deep in European football, but I want to push for Champions League qualification. We have zero excuses anymore. In the Europa League this year, trying to get into the Champions League, we've got Osasuna, Young Boys and Troyes, a really manageable group. So far, so good here. First of January, fourth in the Bundesliga. Teams breathing down our necks though, which is to be expected. Hoffenheim, Frankfurt, Wolfsburg, Leipzig, all of them within striking distance of us. We only really have Leverkusen we can punch up to in the short term. Just need to string more wins together and try getting up near the Dortmunds and Bayern Munichs of the world. How are we going in the Europa League though? Good, 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 good. Undefeated, just one draw. We're into the next round. Well, I'm feeling really confident about our chances in the Europa League. But given how much we spent in the summer, I don't think we're gonna be able to do anything besides maybe renew a contract or two this January window. End of the season, here we go. And we come third. Kaiserslautern are heading back to the Champions League for the first time in 25 years. We gave the title race a good nudge. We finished eight points behind Borussia Dortmund and then six points ahead of Leverkusen. Relegation battle is going to see Stuttgart almost got relegated, but it is Cologne and Darmstadt going down. Borussia Dortmund win DFB Pokal. We actually went on a run this year, which is a surprise. No longer are we a round two exit. Hertha Berlin have sent Heidenheim back down to the 
second division. Liverpool finally get their Champions League title. Fair play, fellas. How'd we go in the Europa League? So round of 16, we got matched up with Valencia and we got eliminated. Oh my God, everything was going so well this season, but we have gone out in the round of 16 against Valencia. Why couldn't we get a decent opponent? We get bloody Valencia. That's not, that's not good, man. And then Star Durams are going to win the Conference League. This exactly is what we were after. Marcus Leonardo, we spent the big bucks on him. He had big time pressure, but he's delivered big time results. 31 goals, two assists. Fair play to Saito as well, up to a 90 overall now and actually starting to perform like someone that is 90 overall. 19 goals, 11 assists. I'm not going to lie. I was thinking to myself in the background, if Saito doesn't have a good season on paper in terms of goals and assists, I was probably going to sell him next year and cash in on the hype, but he's given me a reason to keep him around. Finally, Champions League bound in season number six. And there is no reason why we can't have a good run at the Champions League. Let's give it everything we've got. As we enter Champions League football here in season six, there are three areas in our starting 11 where I've given players time to grow, but it's time to get some superstars. Time to bring in the next generation. Position number one, left back. Ian Matson is our new star left back. 84 overall, and we get the Dutchman on a bargain price here, bringing him across from Sociedad for 36.9 million pounds. Position number two, center back. Malik Thior is joining us and taking Gaston Alvarez's starting center back role. The German signing on from Wolverhampton for 50 million pounds on the dot. But before we can upgrade position number three, we're going to need a lot more money into the bank balance. You can probably tell what position we're going to look to upgrade. Brentford spending 51 mil to get Dinky to the club. And Man United are going to drop 24 million pounds signing our former Polish left back, Michael Kabonjak here. Not bad. Like these players have done pretty well considering I got them purely to survive in the Bundesliga. Over the bloody moon with this one, lads. We've got ourselves Saito, one of the best midfielders in the world who is Japanese. And our right wing is going to see another Japanese superstar joining us here at Kaiserslautern. You guys know who it is by this point. It is going to be Kubo. We're bringing him across from Real Sociedad. He's 88 rated and we pay 73 million for him. And with the amount of fixture congestion I foresee, coming our way this season. I think it's super important for us to get some squad depth, especially at the striker role. Igor Matanovic had 11 months left on his contract. We're going to get him on a cheap. He joins us as a backup option in case anything happens to Leonardo. My God, I'm excited for the year we have ahead here with Kaiser Slalton. How are we going to go in the Champions League? We could easily push for a Bundesliga title here. Everything is in our hands, I feel like, and I'm hoping for the best. A very interesting Champions League group, though. West Ham have felt like a constant in these European finals this year. We saw them win the Conference League earlier in the video. We saw them lose the Europa League final, but now they're in the Champions League. They're looking to continue their own sort of rebuild. Celtic Club Bruges also alive here. This is going to be a really interesting group stage, but it's a group that I think we should be getting out of. Well, that did not go as we expected. That is a hard lesson learned. We get knocked out of our group. We came third. I genuinely thought we were going to go undefeated in this group stage and I did not have Club Bruges winning the damn group. My God, lads. So that means we're back in the Europa League and we're versing AZ Alkmaar in the preliminary rounds. Things are not going quite the way we wanted them to in the Bundesliga either. Sitting down in fifth position. We've made the Champions League once. We need that to be the expectation. The good thing is though we're only six points behind Leverkusen. So I've just got to put trust in the squad that we have that they can get us back in this Bundesliga and a Bundesliga title race and change. Champions League pitcher because this season has gone disappointingly so far. We spent so much money in the summer that we don't even have enough to renew contracts at this point. Dixon Abiyama is going to be leaving to Estudiantes at the end of this season. Come on! Good. All right, good. We don't get too wrapped up in our negative start to the season and we qualify for the Champions League again in season number seven. I'm disappointed we got knocked out in the group, but at least we're going to get another shot at winning it next year. Getting, I was coming into this season thinking we could have a good crack at this. We could be a dark horse. Oh, you're just going to go and get eliminated in the group stages, aren't you, you dickhead? Bayern Munich do win the league and in the relegation zone this year, Schalke going down alongside VFL Bochum. We do get another trophy this this year though, lads, DFB Pokal coming to Kaiserslautern, our second trophy in the entire time we've been here.
here, which is wild considering we won a trophy in season one. And Dusseldorf will be coming up to the Bundesliga next season. Borussia Dortmund do go on and win at the Champions League. I was hoping that one of the teams from our group would go and do it, but that isn't to be. So how do we go in the... Oh my God. When it comes to Europe, we the bed all the time. We went out to AZ Alkmaar in the preliminary round. What is doing? That's actually embarrassing, lads. AC Milan do win the Europa League and final win the Conference League. Not a great season from Marcus Leonard, but Leonardo, but he does get 20 goals again. Our Japanese import Kubo getting 18 and 6. Saito up to 16 and 5. So some good performances all around the park, but this season as a whole, quite disappointing. We need to put our foot on the gas in season seven from day one. There is not a chance I'm letting us stink up the joint like we did last year. Getting in nice and early. Star center back, German center back, Nico Schlotterbeck, a go-to man here, joining us at Kaiser Slauten. I love the way I say Kaiser Slauten. I, my brain won't let me say it any other way. I feel like I'm like American-German hybrid right there. But Nico Schlotterbeck joining us for 42.2 million pounds from PSG. We are going to be saying goodbye, though, to Gaston Alvarez. He wanted out of the club. I was hoping we could keep him as a backup again for another season. Season, but he's sick of being a backup. We get 28.7 million pounds to send him to Anfield. We are not messing about this year, lads. Coming out, making another huge signing. I've got PTA, PTSD from last year, so we're making sure everything is sorted. But it is going to be the Turkish center midfielder, Orkan Kurtsu, who is joining us from AS Monaco. He's ready for some big time Champions League football. We do pay just over 70 million pounds to bring him across. I'm always trying to get some squad depth into the squad wherever possible, especially in Champions League seasons. We get another bargain. I'm on a hunt for a bargain at all times as well. The Colombian left midfielder, Oscar Pereira. This dude looks like a bit of a wonder kid and I'm honestly eyeing him up to be a starter in a future rebuild, but the Colombian joining us for 27 mil for art from RC Lens. This team is way too good to be getting grouped. I mean, unless we're matched up against a literal, like the greatest group of death in human history, in Champions League history, I'm feeling like we should get out of the group this year, surely. I mean, we've got players in the 90s. We've got three players that could probably hit it in the next month. This team is absolutely banging. Our bench is getting up there now, lads. Let's go see our Champions League group and just cross our toes, our fingers, every part of our body and hope that it's not going to be a group of death. Oh, that makes me happy that I signed Kurtzu from Monaco because we're versing them in the group stages. Again, this, Monaco's a good team. They've, we've consistently signed good players from them in Career Mode this year. Copenhagen in there, starred Bucharest. It's not going to be a walk in the park. Last year was a warning symbol for us. Let's use that to our advantage. We've got some European experience now under our belt and go out there and get ourselves into the knockout rounds. And this European curse that we seem to be placing on ourselves. That's more like it, lads. That is more like it. We're out of our group. We top it. We cop just the one loss, which looks like it was against Copenhagen on the first day of the group stages. But we are in to the knockout round. Top of the group. Who do we have? We've got Real Madrid. Jesus Christ, Real Madrid. Oh, that's not what we wanted. That's tough. That's tough. You've got to beat the best to be the best. But my God, we're going to have to be on the best of our game. Sitting fourth in the Bundesliga right now, we're having a pretty good start but I feel like the other teams are also having really good starts to the season. Just going to keep the faith there, though. Three losses, three draws, 10 wins. Get back to the Champions League again for Season 8. First leg is away at the Bernabeu, and we've copped a bit of an L here because Kubo is suspended for the first leg. We're going to need to come out here a snowy night in Madrid and just somehow get ourselves back to Germany in one piece, which we do. We're better than in one piece. We've grown an extra limb here. Matanovic off the bench is going to give us the limb. Lead. That is massive. We take the lead back to Germany. Kubo's coming back. I'm hoping that Saito or Fior aren't going to be suspended, but we've got the lead nonetheless. That is a huge confidence booster. No suspensions, and we are back to full strength. Back in Kaiserslautern with the lead. Can we preserve it though? 2-1 up against Real Madrid for a spot in the quarterfinals. We get there. We draw. Leonardo in the 79th minute scores the goal and we get a huge feather in our caps. A huge confidence booster. We take down Real Madrid and we feel like a whole different beast compared to last year. Quarterfinals, here we come. Oh my God, look at that other round of 16 game above us. Went to a penalty shootout, which Madrid won 11, sorry, not Madrid, PSG won 11-10 on penalties. That is crazy. And of course, 
of course we get drawn up against them. That is, oh my god, the game's really testing us today, aren't they? PSG quarterfinals season number seven here. All right, here goes nothing. All right, here we go, fellas. First leg against PSG. We're at home, which I'm not always a huge fan of, but I'm hoping we can step up here and at least give ourselves a fighting chance to take back to Paris. Hopefully Mbappe's left at this point and gone to Saudi. We get more than a slight advantage to take back. Javi Guerra, our sentiment, our sentiment fielders, scoring for fun. That is huge. Was old mate playing? Mbappe, okay, yeah, my face cam's probably closing it, but Mbappe was starting there for PSG. We take a 3-1 advantage back to the Parc des Princes. Our berets are packed and we're here in the city of love to hopefully finish the job against PSG. They got through to the quarterfinals by an 11-10 penalty shootout. I'm hoping it doesn't get to that point here today, which it does not. We get no yellow cards. No suspensions, no injuries. We dominate PSG. Mbappe scores, but it means nothing. 5-2, and we're heading to the semifinals, the final four. And after taking down PSG and Real Madrid, I'm feeling good. I feel like we can do the whole thing this year. I mean, there's no easy opponents at this point, but Barcelona in the semifinals. Barca into Real, or Barca into PSG into Real Madrid. And if we beat Barcelona, we're probably going to get Man City just to top off the hardest Champions League knockout round run in history. But let's see if we can actually get past Barca. At home, once again for the first leg. Hoping we can take a 3-1 advantage just like we did against PSG. Come on, lads. Step it up. Marcus Leonardo, we need more goals from you. We need more goals from our Japanese players. Leonardo gets a goal. Javi Guerra gets another goal. Too many yellow cards popping around, though. And everything is in the balance as it's a two-all draw, which we're going to take to the Camp Nou. Do they get suspended, though? Oh, okay. Yasic, our right back is going to be suspended. So I'm feeling even less confident confident heading into this game. It's 2 all, but Mendes comes in due to the Yasic's suspension, which means we drop eight overall points to that right back role. Or oh, Nayi comes in as a one all upgrade though. Come on, lads. For a spot in a Champions League final, we get there. Come on, Kubo. Come on, Kubo. Yes, lad. Oh my God, this feels good. We've done it the hardest way imaginable, but we are heading to a Champions League final here in season number seven with Kaiserslautern. And it looks like, as predicted, we're going to be versing Man City in the final. Taking a look around the grounds, lads. Leverkusen winning the Europa League final over Leicester. Atalanta win the Conference League. We finished two points shy of a Bundesliga title. We've gotten so close for the past few years, it feels like, but at least, I mean, that's a great season. 22, 6 and 6 is a great season, but at least even if we lose tonight to Man City, we're going to get another crack next year. Relegation zone, who is it going to be? Cologne, Dusseldorf going down. We did get some silverware earlier in the season as we won the German Super Cup. Bayer Leverkusen thump St. Pauli to win the DFB Pokal. And the relegation playoff yet to be played. Heading into the Champions League final with a full strength starting 11. And again, it's, a, it's the same usual suspects being really consistent for the squad this year. I cannot wait to use this team. And I'm hoping our two Japanese superstars, Saito and Kubo, can play a big role in delivering a Champions League title to Kaiserslautern. Man City are going to be entering this final with some added motivation. We're playing at Old Trafford. I know this has nothing to do with us, but if you're Man City, winning a Champions League trophy in your rival's own stadium is about as big as, as about as big as it gets. That is about as big of a brag as you can have moving forward. So we're going to have to deal with that extra motivation as well. Man City, we cannot get the ball off them early here. I'm just trying to limit their shooting opportunities. They go with that with Doyle. What a save. And we can't keep it out from a corner. Doku, someone I'd considered signing instead of Kubo on the ball here. Madison, I'm trying not to lunge in or give them any shooting opportunities. Doku gets the block. Oh, it's going to be another corner. Good tackle, Kurtzu, man. I have not been able to deal with Man City, but we might be able to get him on the counter-attack. Saito, he's got the pace, and he's got the finish. Oh, my God. We have been getting absolutely demolished in the opening 20 minutes, but a sloppy possession from Man City. A big tackle from Kurtzu and a counter-attacking masterstroke gives us the lead. It might be Manchester United's home ground, but there is another Red Devils dominating today. Haaland, I'm bringing Guerra back. I'm also trying to get the defenders to do their job. Schlotterbeck with a big challenge. 
Man City just, they, they do not look phased at all after conceding. Kubo La Croqueta sending the defender flying. I want to see Yasic just like that. Yasic, I'm going to put the early ball in here. It goes back post. Oh, what a save, Edison. Swatting that one out of the air. Matson, come on. We're killing them down the wing here. We've got numbers. Let's just pass it. Good ball. Saito through. Oh, my God. Just think about your finishing, Jared. Edison's having a great game, but we should have made that too. Madison playing that one there. Big tackle for you all, but they somehow get it back there. That is not what we were after. Erling Haaland has tied things up here for Man City. That's an unfortunate goal to concede. What are we doing defensively there? Haaland is just able to skip right past us. They put that one in. What a save. We need to wake up, though. Kubo's got the pace against Zimmerman. I have no idea. I'm just assuming that's not Walker Zimmerman, the American defender. But we just keep pushing past. Kubo's the move, man. Kubo. Kubo. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Kubo's done that basically himself. We almost concede, then we hit them on the counter attack, and we have the lead again here. In that final part, nothing I wanted to do was what happened. I actually wanted to not square it to Leonardo, but further on the penalty spot. I don't mind though, I don't mind, because we've got the lead back. Score by any means necessary. Man City are so hard to get possession off in this game. Do not let him get an opportunity here. Do not let him get a shot straight at the keeper, thankfully. I'm surprised they're not sending the goalkeeper up for this one. Just get it away. Get it away. Make the save. Yes, Tarani. Let's just hold on and slow down. We've got one minute. I'm just booting this one into as far into the corner as possible. Blow that whistle. Come on, lads. We've done it. Kaiser Slaughter in real life on the cusp of relegation down to the German third division. But we have just won them a Champions League title in seven seasons. And it's going to be our Japanese superstar midfielder, Saito, who is going to be the man to lift the Champions League trophy here at Kaiserslautern. What a player he has been. Lads, I love these Road to Glory style of rebuilds. If you enjoyed it as well, make sure you hit this subscribe button right here and click here to check out another video.